Nichette Butler, you asked, and oh boy, I hope I delivered. Because your request for a Paphia Pedalum video, um, yeah, here's the video. But I bring a gaggle of 19 other channels to your attention just in case you want to know more, find out more, and see if there is other information that could be beneficial to you. So in the form of a care collab, let me honor your request. On December the 1st, 2021, my Care Collab video featured a beginner's mistakes explained and corrected. And the grouping of my slipper orchids looked like this in the video. Fast forward approximately a year and a half. Can I still stand by the first video with my update? Welcome to the video within the Care Collab initiative. As I mentioned, I have a previous video, which I will link in the description. Seeing as this is an update on what has been going on with my Slipper Orchid collection since the first video aired. And yes, there have been some developments which are more obvious and on your screen than with the others that are not so obvious. <laughs> the biggest fail that I have had since 2021 was with my Fragmapedium Memoria Garen Weaver, which I decimated during the months of January, February of 2023. What happened here was my complacency that all was going well anyway, so I keep an eye on it. I was taught a lesson, one that I should know, considering how long I've been growing orchids, that complacency is the orchid grower's worst character trait and does not belong in the hobby. There is no room for complacency. Have I learned my lesson? Well, I have been reminded, but there will probably be other incidences in the future where I'm going to get another lapse and then another reminder. So while it is unfortunate and I'm not sure if I can save my Garen Weaver, that is the status quo at this point in time. Another in your face, Fragmapedium is a newcomer, Fragmapedium Gratrixianum, which I got as a gift from one of the participants of this care collab. Fernanda Nacimento, Orchids and Succulents, back in October of 2021. So why I did not feature it in the previous Care Collab, that escapes me. But here we are, and it is doing fabulously with its faux coral support. I went with that type of a support because the fan needed to have its leaves stretched out so that the nutrients have an uninterrupted flow throughout their structure. Plus, I needed a visual reminder that this orchid has long and thin leaves to stop me from brushing against it causing damage and because back in the day the fan came with one small viable root and there was nothing to keep the fan from moving around in the pot so this has secured it not only to the pot but to the structure and with that I got myself a double whammy support. Well I'm happy to report that this orchid is doing great it is rooted in and has grown a couple of leaves since I received it. Then we have a couple of first-time bloomers that have happened since the original video in the form of chocolate mint, which bloomed a beautiful pale yellow bloom. So happy that this orchid turned out as to what was stated on the label and what I bought. It's always a massive achievement to get a slipper orchid to bloom for the first time, seeing as they are notoriously slow growing. And as far as I can see, we are probably going to be in for another treat because it looks like she is doing something in her crown. Maybe we are going to be blessed with a bloom later on in the season. The other one that is now a blooming size orchid is my Dillonatii. Also happy to see that this orchid was not mislabeled and I have been enjoying this cute bloom since it first opened up probably about four weeks ago now. Mine is not fragrant, but maybe one day it will decide to be fragrant once it matures a little more. Meanwhile, I'm not being greedy. I managed to get a tiny seedling to bloom out. That would make two out of two, which is a ratio I'm happy with. My Iona has been super reliable as well has bloomed out with three blooms, then two blooms, and now again two blooms. So this orchid is in need of a repot this season, which I will do when I get around to it. Knowing that she's capable of three blooms, yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a goo in that pot. And then hopefully she'll bloom three blooms again for us, because the first time I featured her on my channel, it was the three stooges. They were too funny looking. <laughs> Speaking of repots and reliable bloomers, my Lindley Kupovitz was repotted in 2022, and while it bloomed out prior to the repot, that bloom was weak. It was not happy and it dropped 
prematurely. So I am hoping that with the recent repot, I will get the next bloom to be the beautiful, long-lasting and fragrant bloom that can stick around for three months easily. And judging by what I'm seeing in the crown of one of the fans, I'm hoping we're going to be able to observe if that bloom will be back to the strength, beauty and fragrance that I'm accustomed to with this orchid. Speaking of the fragrance of the bloom, it has a very charming raspberry perfume. It's not overwhelming, but it is there whenever you were to walk past the orchid while she's in bloom. And she has survived the repot without any issues at all. Continuing on with the theme of repots, another one that is due for a repot is my No ID Paphiopedalum. For the first time since I have my entire orchid collection, I had some kind of mite issues in the collection in a specific area indoors back in summer of 2022, which once it was recognized was immediately dealt with and thankfully whatever that was, the mite, it has not returned. Still the damage to the leaves of the fans at the time was done, so she looks a little rough as well as a little bit of a sunburn from a couple of years ago. The new fans are already underway, growing well, and for the time being blemish free, hoping to keep it that way. And in doing so, we are going to do a little garlic alcohol treatment while I have the orchid outside. I have done this treatment every second month as a preventative after ridding the orchid of the pests, and since then I have not seen anything return. But the repot is necessary here because not only is the leca rising up higher as the root system is pushing the orchid out of the pot, but the bloom count has dropped from 3 to 2 to now 1. So, hmm. A little makeover for this orchid is on the potting schedule and if you would like to be notified of when that video airs please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and if you wouldn't mind helping the channel out with a like as well as sharing the video then that would also go a long way not only to help my channel but all the participating channels in this care collab. Thank you so very much for being here for clicking the video. Every little helps and please know that you're appreciated. I have one other slipper orchid that I'm hoping to get to bloom again, and that is my Spicerianum. I have a feeling that this one is a biannual bloomer. I cannot be sure. It only bloomed for me for the first time back in 2021. And while it is growing well, I have yet to see if she will bloom again this year to confirm if she is a biannual bloomer. I do not see anything in the crown of any of the fans not getting my hopes up. Got to get a move on if we want to see that happening this season. Oh, but I love the bloom of this one. So, of course, she's a bit stingy on the bloom front. And she's one of the most darling, cheeky, weird, funky. So much interest in that bloom that even when you look at it upside down, ah, you can tell a story just with that bloom. It's amazing. There are so many peculiar characteristics that we can pick out. <laughs> I love that bloom. Hope to see it again soon. Then there are two left which I hope to get to bloom for the first time. The Gloria Nago should be the first one to bloom when you see the teeny tiny Bellatulum which is in its seedling setup since I took it from the declining mother plant that did not appreciate the shipping process back in the day. Gloria Nagel redefines what it means to have slow growing slipper orchids. She really is a snooze mode grower a sloth of all the slippers in my collection. Every year I hope that this will be the year, but nada. Know that I got her back in 2018. <laughs> She's still with us though, doing well. Doesn't appear to have changed much since we saw her last, but I have lost a leaf since 2021. However, I have gotten another one to grow longer compared to all the other ones. So if this is the size of the leaves needed to get this orchid to blooming size, then possibly we are not going to have a bloom this year either. Maybe next year. Meanwhile, <laughs> another leaf is on the way. <laughs> Baby Bellatulum doesn't look any different but I have had to add a little media around the base of the orchid because little one has been busy with the roots and with that was coming up a little high. Like a baby, you know, using the structure of its crib to peek over the railing. We are a long way off to see any blooms on this little one, but I am so happy that so far she's still with us considering how tiny she was with one little strand of a root that I could not determine if it was even viable. So this little one is impressing me and I better not get complacent with it in the future if I don't want it to end up where I think the Garen Weaver is headed. So since my original Care Collab video aired, I have not changed my care for these orchids one iota. 
That's why I'm linking that in the description. Nothing has changed with regards to my fertilizing, my watering, my flushing, light, etc. Everything has stayed the same since then. While some need a repot, the care I'm giving is working in a lecker and self-watering setup. Emphasis on the care I'm giving, none of which was allocated to the Garen Weaver for far too long. The mistakes I recognized as pointed out in the original video remain corrected. I have never fallen back and made the same mistake again. The new mistake I have made with a Garen Weaver, well, now you know. While slow growing, do not get complacent with slipper orchids. <laughs> Note to self. I can address specific questions in the comments without referring you always to the original video. Let me know. It's good to have you here. It'll be great to see you. Thank you so much for watching the time you spent on my channel. And should you want to see the original video before asking any questions, please go to the description and click on the link. That is where you will also see all participating channels with the corresponding links to their videos on this subject. I'm looking forward to anything you would like to bring to my attention that you would like me to elaborate on. All that remains is to wish you a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.